For the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast is fueled by the Man Shake. I lost 30 kilos in 10 months using this meal replacement shake. If you want to support the show and Max and my weight loss journey, or to even start your own, click the link in the description below. The Man Shake. Real blokes, real results. For the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I am Max Cooper. And this is For The Players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast for 40 years of playing PlayStation, 8 plus years in the games media combined. I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8am on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9am on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join us as the conversation happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopcultures where you can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are listening to us on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you are on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment and if you want to support us financially you can at patreon.com slash the pop cultures as well as our merchandise store popcorns.com slash shop where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it now max you mentioned this before we even went live so we need to do a bit of uh forewarning here some housekeeping some housekeeping so for those of you that do join us live on twitch uh normally we do record at 4 p.m on a saturday afternoon however uh over the this coming month that is the month of november and also the first week of december <laughs> uh, we will be recording on sundays uh as you know now that the state has opened and every you know people are off doing more things i have like three wrestling shows uh the 20th 27th and then they get on the 4th uh and then my birthday is next week so we're going out to do stuff on the saturday uh because it's the day my birthday falls on so it's everything's just sunday i think there's like one week where it's not but i'm sure max will want to go and do something so if you are joining us well, on twitch I, sundays the rest of the month it's more of a let's not go sunday sunday saturday sunday sunday maybe we should just be like we're just going to do sundays for a little bit and we'll let you know when it's coming back to saturday yeah it'll likely return back to saturdays in probably after the first week of december because saturdays are cool um mm -hmm. but yeah right now we're just you know in returning to the outside world so mm. it's nice because I'm like, I'm so, so excited for those wrestling shows. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, man. But, you know, it is. We are recording on Sunday because, as we said, we've been off enjoying our freedoms. Max, how did you enjoy your freedoms this weekend? Uh, so, Friday, it was my wife and I's wedding anniversary. So, uh, five years. Congratulations. So that was fun. We celebrated that by going and getting locked in a room together and escaping. Nice. Because there's nothing like you know if testing the strength of a marriage by being locked in a room yeah. after being in lockdown for x hundred amounts of days if that's not an analogy of when, of marriage in and of itself then i mean it's quite it's quite humorous it's like oh we're finally free and we're out of lockdown let's go get locked in a different room and try to but like, yeah you know you can escape that room though that's the minor difference um so we did that friday night that was awesome fun so the, the theme was kind of like this haunted mansion um so that was that was great fun we had a 70 minute time limit it was uh my wife and i and two other couples so it's a group of six had a 70 minute time limit we did it in 70 72 minutes so it wasn't too bad nice. uh yeah really really super fun and then last night i caught up with my board game group because one of them is from metro melbourne so it was the first time we could catch up with him uh and trying to play a board game that the last time we played it was about seven and a half months ago and we saved it in the middle of a chapter it took some time to get back into the swing of things <laughs> i imagine then... it would have <laughs> so that was that was fun what about yourself what did you get up to so fr How... friday after uh, friday evening for me was at home um so it was not, nothing to nothing to excite there just just the usual uh but last night uh i hiked my way into the melbourne uh area into the metro uh to see fellow pop c uh co-host jem 
uh, for her birthday. So she had a, a small little shindig at her place. Uh, it was awesome. It, so, uh, we, it was good to sort of hike in and, and sort of, you know, get out of the area for a little bit. Just kind of like that. I don't know. Like, so, right. Like, uh, I'm enjoying going out and doing and doing things. So it was fun. So we went to her place. Uh, yeah, really small shindig. Uh, drank a little bit too much. Uh, I kind of fell asleep on the on the on the ground, uh, and my hip is really hu- really hurting because I just slept on carpet with a pillow, and I clearly just landed and stayed in one spot for a window of time because and uh, I was I I fell asleep like in jeans and uh, the little stud on the right hand side just. I, I clearly just slept on that because there is a very tender side of my hip. I kind of, I was, <laughs> and that turns out I left a bunch of stuff. That, I left some stuff there too. So kind of, obviously I kind of just emptied my pockets and then laid down. And, <laughs> and that was where, where I ended up for the evening. But no, it was good. So I caught up with uh, a number of, uh, of of my wrestling friends as well from the local wrestling scene. So we have all been in this uh, big chat for the better part of, of this year and, and last, last year as well. So it's been, uh, it, it was good to sort of see them in person again. Uh, mm. Well, cause I've, I, I have seen them in person, but only ever at shows. So they're all in work mode at the time and they're busy doing work things. We're here. We get to see them in non-work mode. It was, it was great. You know, it was very, it was very interesting. Uh, yeah. And then I just came home and then I picked up a new mixing board uh, for here. Cause the mixing board I, I have here is like eight years old and shit. So I picked up a new one uh, and I'm excited to, or secondhand new one. So I'm excited to hopefully fix some of the backend audio stuff that you guys don't tend to see because I normally edit it out. But uh, yeah, look, uh, so yeah, next weekend yeah, is, is my birthday. So I've, my, my father is coming over from Melbourne. Uh, if I get to see him for the first time in not as long as last time, because remember he came back, he came over before the last big honking lockdown. So it's still a number of months, but not a huge hunk, hunk number of months. Um, so that's pretty cool. Pretty keen, pretty keen for that. Otherwise, other than that, my week has been uh, more of the same. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just work and doing more work, and then coming home and and get going to sleep to go do more work. Uh, you know, it's 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 the, it's the, the usual the usual rotation. Yeah, which is fun. Family's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So your family's not so good. What did you get working up today? Yeah. So the reason why I'm recording from home today is one, I currently don't have a car. My car is getting serviced. And the other part was um, I ended up working last night, which I didn't think I was going to have to do. And uh, I woke up to uh, a very upset wife and child. And it's it's just, it's been a day. You know, kids just sometimes are pains. And, you know, when the kid doesn't sleep, no one sleeps. Mm. So we're all running on fumes today. And um, I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't do it today. I need to record from home. You're like, yeah, man, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And, look, and that was shortly before I just kind of fell asleep by accident. Um, so I, ha- I, you know, I came home, had a shower, got sort of stuff, you know, ate, ate something. And then I was mucking about with, with, with my son. And then I laid down and then... I was gone and I woke up an hour or so later, I guess. And I had that real kind of dissociative wake up where like your body mm. feels weird. You're not really quite sure where you are in time or space. You're like, what the fuck is going on? You're like, what year is it? What year is it? Where am I? What's going on? I'm touching my face. It's like, this doesn't feel like my face. <clears throat> it was really weird, actually. And I was like, oh, this this is a, a really uncomfortable sensation. Like, what the fuck have I done? But yeah, you know. So, the, but now, I, now I'm, I'm at least. Uh, I think I'm aware of my presence. I think I'm grounded, uh, which, uh, which, which is all good. But uh, look, let's talk some games. It's what kind of what we are here for. Max, have you played a game this week? Yeah. So this week I wrapped Tales of Arise. Finally, the saga is done. So just shy of thirty hours, a golden pathing it. I feel like. You've put way more than that into it. No, so no, it was just just shy of thirty hours. I was, uh, I think I estimated last week that I was at the room of the final boss. Mm. I was not. I was just shy of it. And then, in typical JRPG fashion, the final boss took me about two and a half hours to beat, and then I had like 
that amount of cutscenes to get through afterwards and all that stuff. I think the story, for me personally, the story wrapped up kind of nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, they did kind of rush it in the second part. They they kind of fell into that um, stereotypical trope of the game's wrapping up, but you still need a bunch of information, so we're just going to dump a bunch of exposition on you at once. Um, wasn't too bad. There was a lot of reading, because at the time I was playing with uh, Japanese voice and English subtitles. <clears throat> so I probably wouldn't have been as tedious if I had have just used the the English voice actors. But you know, that's just how I like to play it. Uh, yeah, the, the the story wrapped up really nicely. Uh, the ending made sense uh, as to how I portrayed the characters that I was playing. So that 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 felt rewarding in a way. And uh, hopefully, in the coming weeks, we will have a deep dive conversation <gasps> with a few friends of the show, hey. and we'll go we'll go full spoilers because it's been out. Uh, long enough because it took me so long to finish it yeah so we hinted that last week uh, that Max is going to go off on his own uh, and do some cool little things because I ain't going to fucking talk about it because I don't care but uh... (laughs) (laughs) oh jeez oh shit Uh, yeah so that'll that'll be exciting to go talk about uh, Mm. some some Tales of Arise with with other people anything else you spent some time with? Uh, I played a little bit more Back for Blood Mm mm-hmm game's still red i'm still not very far i've just completed uh a couple of i'm a couple of missions into act two i've been playing uh the new yokotaro game voice of cards the isle of dragons so this game is uh, essentially set up like a card tabletop rpg so as you're like the, you're set up on a board a board game like a tabletop and all the cards are flipped over and as you as you move your piece through the board all the cards flip revealing the tiles mm-hmm. that you're on. Uh, some tiles will be. I'm not very far. I've only played the first hour. Um, so you kind of form your party by talking to character cards, and then as you leave on your adventure to fight the dragon. Um, you, you know, you travel through the wilderness and there's, there's specific cards that are road cards. And then if you, if you take the path off the road, there'll be mountainous cards that you can't traverse or forest cards where you can find hidden treasures, fight random enemies. And then, uh, when you go into your battle screen, it is your standard turn-based RPG, but your characters, instead of having little character models, they are shown on cards. And then you select a card to attack with. It's it's re- uh, thematically it's it's absolutely fantastic. It's right up my alley. I'm I'm a super huge fan of card based, uh, both tabletop games and card based games. Yeah, I was gonna say this sounds very much like a Max game. Uh, I'm a fairly I'm a, I'm a fairly big fan of Yokotaro. So with his work on Dragon Guard, Nia, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, this is a, a fairly big departure in gameplay from those type of games. Uh, it does still have those RPG elements, but it's very much a, it's very reminiscent of a, like a tabletop RPG game as opposed mm. to a third person action adventure RPG. Very nice. Um, well, see, cause like I'm not a big card game guy. Yeah. I have a number of reasons only because I, I don't have the either memory and or intellect to really process the card mm. stuff with all the ifs, ends, thens, or buts that comes with a card like oh you have this but if you have that and i'm like ah and my brain is just not capable to focus that hard and or really understand all those different things and how they play off each other so i just don't have the capacity to do so so i just don't play them yeah um and that's that's pretty much it for me for games this week nice so i myself uh had a very quiet week on the games as well once again even though we have a stack of games that we need to review and finalize uh both you and i have seemed to have just gone nah. you know we've just hit a hit a hit a window uh so like this week i did spend some more time uh with story of seasons which is a which is a given because that game's dope uh so to to go uh to go with that, I did jo- uh, join friend of the show, Paul James Games, uh, 
over on Player 2. I had a brain fart of what they were called there. Over at player2.net.au, we did a review discussion about Story of Seasons where he and I just essentially gushed about how good the game is, how good it is on the PlayStation, and also how he named his the horse in the game after his wife and what that subtext means. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, it was good. So go check that out. That is on uh, the website, player2.net.au. It is also on the YouTubes too. So go check that out. Uh, what else? Oh, I, have, I have dived a little bit more into uh, Far Cry 6. I still think that game is stupid large. Because uh, like I go in there and I, I don't I don't like give it a short run. I give it a couple of hours when I've sat there. I sat down. I'm like I'm still in the first region. I'm like level seven or something now, and I'm mm-hmm. just finding myself just driving around, running through signs and kind of like stopping at things and doing all the things that will make will very clearly set up for me to not see the game through, because like there is a golden path, but there isn't. Like, I'm still doing the missions as they appear, but I'm just yeah. kind of stopping and, and mm. getting things along the way. And I believe that is, that is like, the distraction I, the distraction idea behind that Ubisoftification uh, delivery. Um, you know, so, I like, I, I'm enjoying it, but I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, sweet, fine, right. Uh, one thing I did also do is I, I went and downloaded uh, Death Stranding on the PS4 so I could upload my save file so I can put that into uh, the PS5 director's cut version uh, I haven't done that yet I did that yesterday before I left uh, to go hang out uh, was there anything else I played this week was there I don't recall I don't know personally I've only seen you online playing Far Cry 5 so sweet that means I was uh, only online playing Far Cry 6 then <laughs> yeah, Far Cry I don't, 6 I mean I don't think I played anything else once again it has been a bit of a quiet week so work has been work uh, and with that like I have been working the additional uh, extra hours uh, and then now with the gyms open properly and no, no no risk of me causing lockdowns from them Max uh, is so I've been going to the gym a couple of days this week can, can you not taunt the lockdown, <laughs> please. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't talk the lockdown. But actually, well, this kind of brings us into that into our next chat before we mm. jump into the main part of the show. It's our Get Less Fat update. For those that don't know, uh, during 2020 and 2021, I have lost near on 37 kilos uh, using a meal replacement shake a uh, meal replacement meal thingy called the man shake uh they i am an ambassador of the product and they help support this show max has joined me on a weight loss journey this year in 2021 losing uh over 15 kilos uh so this is a section where we discuss our our week how it's been where we're at and uh and to keep ourselves accountable max so i haven't had any shakes this week but i'm down a kilo and a half and I don't know what's changed because mm. nothing's really changed. But I mean, yay. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. It's not bad. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing. Um, I just don't know how it happened. Yeah. Because no, like I haven't I haven't been exercising any more than I normally would. Um uh, I'm not working any less or any more, so my, my my daily step count is still the same. It's sitting at the like the thirteen um thirteen thousand to fourteen thousand range. But I'm just like, apparently just eating less. Woohoo, I guess. I've been snacking this week. So yeah, I guess yeah, that's, that's been probably a, that's probably a big one. I'm sure it plays a role. I'm sure it plays a role. Mm. Like so for me as as I was alluding to and I, and I, and I actually I guess because we've we because we've had this freedom I'm taking the kid out a lot more yeah. this week. So I, I guess I have done a little bit different. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, as I was alluding to, uh, the like the only major change for me. So last week I, I discussed that my lowest weigh-in to date of 105.6. I did spring back a little bit. So I'm, I'm about at 106 now, uh, which is to be expected. Like Those fluctuations happen. It's, it's part of the process. It's part of the journey. Excuse me. Um, so like I'm uncomfortable with that, but I've, additionally, I have as I said I have returned to the gym, which is fantastic. So I've been able to walk again, run again, lift lift heavy shit, put it back down, lift heavy shit up again. Be able to do all the standard gym things, and it's awesome. Like I kind of because I haven't really done it in, I don't know, like three ish months, I guess, because like that was the like even though the the gyms have been open, quote unquote, you needed to make an appointment. It was only for forty five minutes. There was all these all these little caveats to why like just kind of putting hurdles up 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 in there, mm. which makes sense because at that time not everything was where it's at now. Um so I was like, I'm just gonna wait until it's until it's ready to ready to go and it's free flow. 
um yeah so i've been able to go back it's just good and like i forgot the like the endorphin rush that you get after it so like i because when i when the, the first day back i did I, you know i did I, I did 30 minutes on the treadmill and then i lift a bunch of shit so in that 30 minutes i'll do 10 minutes walking five minutes running 10 minutes walking five minutes running and when i was done i was just, i felt that i could just I, I i just i can't explain it it was it was a little euphoric i was like hmm. whoa because like my my shit's just shooting like my, my brain's shooting hard my body's shooting hard i'm like i'm just gonna go and lift some things i was like Grr. it was it was fantastic and then with friday because uh, as of 6 p.m on friday when the regions opened up everyone was like i ain't going to the gym because the gym was empty it was beautiful it was like five o'clock on a friday and the gym was empty i was able to take my time do whatever i needed and it, it's like it ticked all the boxes and it, it was so good to have me back but yeah and i've been doing the shakes uh i've uh i've been doing the cookies and cream st- sh- uh, shake still still top notch i do have more coming uh however the Aust- australia post has just been uh fucked right now they have been objectively fucked and uh so yeah i i, I am awaiting another more a delivery of my shakes uh they're meant to arrive like wednesday it's now sunday so i guess they ain't coming yet but wait and see mm. but if you want to support max and my weight loss journey or maybe even start your own you can by heading to the link in the description below it is bitly b-i-t dot l-y slash f-t-p man shake just by clicking the link, you help support the show. You don't have to buy anything. Just go in there, have a look around, see what's on offer, grab it if you want. Who knows? Maybe you'll change your life the same way that Max and I have. Anyway, Max, that's enough of that. Let's get into the section called Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Uh, well, the first big thing, a little sneaky state of play. Yeah. So, Thursday morning, State of Play kicked off, and uh, the following stuff was shown. Uh, this is definitely not in order, because I did not watch this live. Uh, so, we had uh, Star Ocean, The Divine Force, coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in 2022. I believe it showed off a short trailer, uh, showing a little bit of gameplay, a little bit of story content. Uh, not too much there. I think it's been a, quite some time since the last Star Ocean game, if I'm not mistaken. So it may be a nice return to form. Star Ocean was never my RPG of choice. I don't think this one is for me personally, but it did look all right. Uh, We have Little Devil Inside coming to PlayStation 5 at some point in 2022. No no clear window for that one, unfortunately. And the the state of play itself, it didn't show 2022. The standalone trailer did, however. Yeah. This game still looks incredible to me. I, I really like the art style that they've chosen to go for. Uh, the game itself looks super interesting. Uh, I'm hoping that it's early 2022. I'm hoping it's not February 2022. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I know, like... I know friends of the show uh, uh, over in the US, the Dual Sense podcast, they're another position pod. Uh, I know that they would be stupid excited uh, for to see this. They have been hyping it up on Twitter like where is the little devil inside where is it where is it it's here you can chill dude it's here it's coming i right? because I'm, I'm very happy uh we have death's door coming to playstation 4 and playstation 5 releasing november 23rd and i believe if you pre-order the title you will get a free copy of titan souls uh, which was a playstation plus game uh, a yearish or so ago it has been on playstation plus um so that's cool death door is one of those um isometric souls style rogue ish games uh it was for a while um an xbox exclusive um it's great to see it coming across the playstation uh this is a fantastic little game and say paul james in the chat uh mentioned that he backed little devil inside when it was on kickstarter that was a kickstarter game i mean i don't remember that either Mm-hmm. next up we got some bug snacks news it's getting a free update next year titled the isles of big snacks so i think it's just a bit of an expansion with bigger bug snacks yeah it appears that way uh <laughs> so and like, more hats i believe yeah all the bug snacks have hats 
which is nice. Uh, yeah, so there are a couple big bosses in the game that were just big bug snacks. Uh, so it's cool that they're sort of expanding on that. They, I think the idea is they talk about like a prehistoric aisle, mm. you know, very, I, I'm feeling very Jurassic Parky sort of vibes, you know. I imagine, I hope that there's some sort of play on like Isla Nublar or something like that, you know, when it, with the, the names of the, of the Jurassic Park islands. But like Bug Snacks was that game that I hated. I played it. I loved it. I platinumed it. And I want to, and I'm keen for the DLC. <laughs> Uh, next up we have Deathverse coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 and I believe this is set after the game Let It Die so on the PlayStation blog this game is set in the world after the events of Let It Die where players fight for stardom in the survival TV reality show Death Jamboree the show takes place in a virtual world known as the Deathverse which was created by the Yotsumiya group as a final destination for people's souls I remember, wasn't it Let It Die also a PlayStation Plus game that because it was a multiplayer I, game that didn't land? I think so, yes. I remember it doing well. So, credit to them for still going with it? Mm. Uh, next up, we have Kart Rider Drift coming to PlayStation 4. It's a free-to-play kart racing game with a beta launching in December this year. Uh, next up, we had First Class Trouble coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. It is also one of the PlayStation Plus games for November. It is a social deduction game similar to Among Us. Okay. But instead of running around as little dudes, you're like actual people. It looks kind of jank. It, yeah. Uh, next up, we have... Speaking of jank, next up, we have Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 December 16th. <laughs> Uh, we are OFK, please, uh, coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 in 2022. This kind of looked interesting. This was kind of like a uh, like a biopic of an actual band. Yes. Because yes. I believe their album's dropping in uh, in conjunction with the game. Or yeah. like, it might be a single EP actually dropping with the game. So it's an EP. So there, there is still like indie, indie uh, alternate band out of California. Uh, and yeah. they're essentially retelling their story on, on how they became to be the band that they are. So it's a great little idea in concept. And then throughout that, there are six chapters. And each one of those chapters is connected to one of the six songs on the on their upcoming EP. So at least from a creative standpoint, a standpoint that's pretty cool. Mm. Like that sounds that sounds mad. Like I don't think it's entirely my sort of game. I don't think they're entirely my sort of music. But uh, I still love the idea nonetheless. It does kind of ha- like it does have that little indie, uh, super indie feel to it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, we have King of Fighters 15 coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 with an open beta starting November the 19th. And that is very much not a betting game. It's also very much not a max game. Um, overall, I think the state of play was a little underwhelming. I mean, they did straight up temper expectations with, hey, this is just third-party stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd d- argue that almost most of it's indie stuff. Yeah, I feel they should have prefaced it with it's a third-party indie thing now like don't get me wrong like by 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 as i said by burying it in terms of just being like hey it's just third party and the essentially came out like a couple days after that they announced it so it was a very quick turnaround no real hype on it i get i I, it very it it did show that that was very likely that it's not going to be your big hitters i mean the things that would get you excited yeah like five nights of freddy's of course it was there we've seen in everything ever and it's just you know i mean it's just not like uh it's just not where, what we're landing you know what i'm saying it's just not feeling it for me there uh uh but what i said the, the only other thing that stood out like we are ofk started as a cool idea uh wait and see how it delivers bug snacks is the only thing that really took my door you know took my idea death's door is probably the one that i'm most excited for uh because i've heard nothing but good things and shout out to oz gamers with like the perfect tweet that encapsulated uh my stance on the game i will find it now because it made me chuckle i went oh that's 100 percent me uh where is it where is it so are you a playstation or nintendo fan peep you hate xbox and all it stands for while one of the best games from that platform in 2021 death store is headed your way we implore you to forget when uh forget it went there first and take a look and my oz gamers you get me man you get me 
so that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm super, super excited uh, for it. Uh, next up, we have the PlayStation Plus games for the November. We have First Class Trouble coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. We have Knockout City, PS4, PS5. So uh, you could play for free up until I believe it was level 20. The game is now just completely free. That's the uh, the dodgeball 3v3 game. Which you had a bit of fun with. Game. Yeah, it's great. I really enjoyed it. We have Kingdoms of Amalar Re-Reckoning coming to PlayStation 4. And then the three PSVR titles that we uh, were told were coming are The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, The Persistence, and Until You Fall. And I believe The Persistence can be played outside of VR as well. Ooh. Well, the one that, the only one that I'm aware of is Saints and Sinners. Like, that that has that hits the charts most months, mm. I think. Uh, so obviously it's pretty good. Maybe the Walking Dead name behind it is what what is what sells it, is what pushes it. But we'll, uh, well now, now that it's coming our way for nothing, I'll have, I'll have to check it out. And lastly, for the PlayStation news, we have the PlayStation PC label. So Sony's push to PC is getting serious. Some Steam users have noticed overnight. Uh, I believe this article was published on Friday. Uh, that the platform holder has renamed the publisher of some of its place uh, of some of its PC ports from PlayStation Mobile to PlayStation PC LLC, and now VGC via recent error has discovered through a corporation wiki listing that Sony has registered the division in April of this year. Well, this is great. Like I, I we have we've been on the record here, even being a PlayStation show, how having these games come to PC is a hundred percent a good thing. Yes, like they've they've seen their li- they've seen their life cycle on the console. Get head on over there, get some more lies on them, get some more love out there, and make make some sneaky extra money. Like you know, if we, with God of War, God of War right now is the most uh, uh, wish list slash pre order title on Steam. Like for the if you go there, pre orders mm. number one or wish list number one, whatever, right? People are keen for these games. And it's one of those things, I, you know, you've seen the discussion like, oh, should Sony just start doing them day and day? No, they shouldn't because that's not, that's the opposite of the business model that they're, that they're using here. And to, knowing that they're willing to go potentially make an LLC just for PlayStation PC ports, like that's that's a lot. Like that that's at yeah. least commitment to the bit. So I think we're going to see uh, quite a number of games releasing, uh, you know, over the next coming coming years uh onto your pc so like all the big hitters from uh from the playstation 4 will likely make their way across and then in a handful of years we'll start seeing ps5 titles come over there as well i do wonder whether whether there'll be some that just won't go over like i'm thinking like ratchet and clank might be one of those examples that don't go over someone i I, someone mentioned the other day and i was like that's probably a good point because that that game does seem best fitted to a a family or quote-unquote family younger audience on the couch title very similar to like Sackboy, but I think Sackboy might be the next one that's coming to PC, at PC from... Yeah, it is from rumored, rumored at yeah. the moment, yeah. And then, of course, there's that long ongoing rumor of Bloodborne finally making its way across to PC as well, with all its un- uncapped frame rates, etc., or things to get people excited. But uh, no, this is certainly a good thing. What do you think, Max? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I mean, we've been saying it for ages that there's no reason why everyone shouldn't be able to experience these titles now that they've lived out their cycle on on the on the hardware of choice so yeah it's easy. you know the exposure can only be a good thing oh it's an easy win it's easy money mm. as i sit my water next story max uh ubisoft uh ubisoft have already confirmed that assassin's creed infinity is in development supposedly Infinity is a massive project, a quote, online platform that will be expanded on for years to come. An expected direction given that the most recent Assassin's Creed games all have online elements like daily quests and in-game storefronts. During Ubisoft's latest earnings call, CEO Yves Gilmore confirmed that the that the game isn't going down the, r- the route of, quote, it's not going to be free to play, and that the game will have a lot of narrative elements in it. Gilmore c- uh, comments line up with what previously has been reported about uh, Assassin's Creed Infinity. Apparently, it's set to cover multiple historic timelines, each boasting its own playable characters, live service elements, uh, sorry, live characters. Live service elements will supposedly allow developers Ubisoft Quebec and Ubisoft Montreal to add more scenarios over time. 
Infinity has been described as huge, uh, sorry, as a huge undertaking is currently in early development with an aim for 2024. Now, we've discussed this in the past, Max, about this online Assassin's Creed thing and how it's really not for us, uh, mostly because it just seems to take all the things that people will like about Assassin's Creed and fuck with it in not a good way. Yeah, so the I, I think the way I interpreted it the first time when they announced it was that the Assassin's Creed Infinity like was going to be essentially a hub that was going to be free and then you could purchase your stories through it a la carte mm. is what i is what i thought it was going to be uh it's interesting to see that that's not the case it's going to be a purchase title and then it's going to be essentially your uh your one disc to play all the games yeah and it seems like you'll just have a massive file size of of the stories that you want installed of those time periods of that character. And then you can go from there and they'll all launch from one tidy location as opposed to having to quit out of Valhalla to open up, uh, origins or Odyssey or depending on how far back they go type well, thing. Yeah. Which that's is good. Which that's, is always good. That's implying they make some sort of like Netflix for Assassin's Creed, right? Where you can sort of go back and play the old yeah. titles. There's nothing down the line saying that that's going to be the case here. It, it does appear to be a new venture, <clears throat> but yeah. maybe like they'll have access to all those old characters. So you're essentially getting expanded works on characters you love. Like, you know, you are, even though like no one's really played Ezio in like the longest time now they can have like, essentially like a small five six hour campaign about an another Ezio story right well, like mm. why not like that would be a good a good use of this idea or they can just start you know like everyone's like oh why can't we get Assassin's Creed fucking Australia and like all right well, why but okay uh that's his his here it is you know and they can do small little runs of different things and sort of tick all those boxes that of everyone asking yeah. you know, what everyone's been everyone's been asking for um when it comes to assassin's creed they can deliver it in smaller chunks and because they're with the smaller chunk is a less developmental demand they can they can essentially suss out which ones are working which ones aren't and they know where to funnel that support it's a cool idea and concept but valhalla though so there's simply no getting around just how successful origins odyssey and now valhalla have been for ubisoft a combination of free content upgrades in-game purchases and paid expansions have ensured the ongoing commercial success of all three games but it's assassin's creed valhalla that has really performed above and beyond its the the publisher's expectations during this the, the aforementioned financial briefing ubisoft confirmed that Val, that valhalla which is just under a year old is now the company's second most profitable game ever hot damn i couldn't i couldn't find what the first one is uh i don't know rayman or something no i've no idea just dance tetris oh it probably is just dance to be honest that that, that game that, that series is, is just everywhere um yeah no surprises you know they when they made the change of the the most recent three assassin's creed games to those uh f semi or well, fully open world but semi rpg like mm. i think um it changed the formula just enough to reinvigorate the series uh, I certainly enjoyed it a lot more than the earlier ones. Agreed. And, and obviously that, you know, the the proof is in the pudding that, you know, it's obviously doing well to be its second best, uh, most profitable game, and it's just under a year old. Mm. So they're, they're clearly doing something right. Or or something wrong with just littering it with microtransactions like it one or the other it's gonna go either way it's probably gonna go the shit one if ubisoft can do anything it's bury a game so fingers crossed it's that, not that one but it's it's all looking the way but this is the big bit of news mac this is a huge yeah well let, of news. talking about games that we're hoping don't get buried skydance new media the developer containing talent such as uncharted creator amy hennig has uh on i believe it was a friday they announced yeah. it's developing an original marvel game the title will be a quote narrative driven blockbuster action adventure game featuring a completely original story and take on the marvel universe as a whole skydance new media says it's attempting to make quote high fidelity richly interactive experiences crafted for traditional gaming platforms as well as emerging streaming services amy hennig now president of skydance new media said quote i can't imagine a better partner than marvel for our first game 
The Marvel Universe epitomizes all the action, mystery, and thrills of the pulp adventure genre that I adore and lends itself perfectly to an interactive experience. It's an honor to be able to tell an original story with all the humanity, complexity, and humor that makes Marvel characters so enduring and to enable our players to embody these heroes that they love, end quote. See, so, so, so can we read into that that she specifically said these heroes, so it's going to be a group game? Well, because if you look in the chat, Supersonic X1991, thank you for the follow, my dad, uh, they've jumped in and they said an X-Men video game since we're getting Wolverine in 2023. That is a good, like, that's a good idea. Like in terms of a, as you mentioned, heroes, like there is a group uh, that, that would be a great way to hit all that. And in terms of that, that, that crazy adventure, like those mutants would be a great way to hit all those boxes. So with Amy Hennig being the creator of Uncharted, like they like, if we can get anything that's in the vein of Uncharted, whether it be in character delivery, in humor, in, in, in narrative, and, you know, with real cool action set pieces, you know, wrapped in great character things like that is, that is Marvel. So like, she is yeah. a great pick for that. And like knowing that she hasn't, released anything since uncharted because she just seems to be ha just inconveniently dropping uh from uh franchise so, so failed ta failed failed pitch or failed development to failed development uh it's hopefully we see this one through uh now with that in mind i know in a in a little group chat that you and i are a part of uh friend of the show joel said it, it would have made more sense for her to do guardians of the galaxy if we hadn't just seen it like, you mm. know, like that, that very, uh, 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 Nathan Drake energy can be, can be pushed through, uh, Star Lord, right? But you know, we've just seen that. So who, like, do you think it's an X-Men? Do you think it's a group thing? Like, and if so, who could it be? Like, are I mean, we, or yeah. it's going to be really dumb when you get like the Immortals or the Eternals or something that we're well, not. Well, I think, I think the, I, I originally thought the Eternals and then it decided to bomb really hard at the, at the theaters. So mm. I think maybe not. I was thinking maybe, uh, what's that group of people? Is it the Defenders with like Iron Fist ah, and. Ah, yeah. It's yeah. so um, Iron Fist, Daredevil, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Yeah. Like a Daredevil game would be great. You, you could, you could. You could pull a Drake with with a Daredevil game. Yeah, but like that's kind of not. I mean, Daredevil, I mean, though. Daredevil is very much more serious than what. Yeah, Matt a... Murdock is much more serious than Nathan Drake. But yeah, it could go. Yeah, it could go a lot of different ways. Like yeah, one it could it could also be uh, a Fantastic Four. The chat says yeah. that could be that would work and that would mirror the that that energy that certain energy that certain um, delivery of certain characters. So Fantastic Four would be good. Like there has been Fantastic Four games in the past, but they're poo, and there's also been poo movies. So a Fantastic Four could certainly use the yeah. re the, the love uh even just to sort of demonstrate that it is a viable uh franchise that's a viable uh ip to to have because like for those that may not read the comics or have read the comics in the past like F fantastic four seems like an absolute waste of time so to have mm. that re resold rebranded um you know but of course, Paul James the chat does mention Soul Reaver, which uh, Amy Henney was involved in, which is a much more serious than Uncharted. That is correct. However, in the description that she provides, she does clearly uh, deliver a tone of what she wants to get out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it ain't Soul Reaver. So it is more in in that that side. Um, yeah, that's it. Because yeah, I, I, oh, it's it's tough. Like I. Because right now we've got the Wolverine game coming out in 2023 from Insomniac Games. That makes me go, it's probably not an X-Men release because you don't want to confuse that too much. Because um, even though, like, once again, that specific, del that, that specific delivery would have also worked for a Spider-Man game under Amy Hennig. But, like, mm. maybe Iron Man. Like, Iron Man has a lot of, you know, Nathan Drake thing. But, like, would an Iron Man game work? We've seen it in the uh, in the camouflage VR game. That was fine, and obviously they've been in the Avengers game most recently as well. And yeah, I don't know. There's there the potential is huge. It's too many. Yeah, and uh, we guess we'll just have to wait and see what it becomes. Max, this week a bunch of games did receive some updates. One of them being Returnal, easily the most requested feature since Returnal launched back in April of only this year. Wow, it feels like it was so much longer ago. Players will finally be able to quit the game without losing progress on their current run. 
Uh, developer Housemark calls the option Suspend Cycle, and it will introduce with the game's big 2.0 update, which released earlier this week. To be clear, this isn't the same as saving your game. You cannot continue from a suspended data more from suspended data, sorry, more than once. Housemark explains by suspending the cycle, returner will simply create a single use suspend point, and once you resume playing, the suspend point is deleted and cannot be used again. Your game will continue directly from the moment you left it. And if you want to suspend the cycle again, your progress will be captured from that new point onwards. You can't suspend your run during cutscenes, combat, or first person gameplay, so use it wisely. A dedicated photo mode is also being added to the game, which can be activated anytime outside of cutscenes and first person sections. Max, you've nearly finished the game, but would this get you go would you get you go back? I've actually got it installed on a PlayStation 5 ready to uh, get through it. Nice. I'm going to try and get that last thing that I'm missing. This does not get me back into it. Um, the game to kick my ass too bad and I'm not uh, I'm not brave enough to go back. Yeah. I mean, this this is definitely, like, like I said, it's, it's not a save point that you can keep trying. It's not like you can suspend your cycle right before a boss and if you fail the boss, you can jump back into that suspension point. It's purely of a... I need to get up and do something, therefore I'm going to suspend my cycle, and when I come back to it, I'm going to be exactly where I left off, mm. and that's it. Pretty much. And, like, yeah. f- for me, like, what I would want is the first example that you gave, not the second one, because I have no yeah. problem getting to the place, and then it's going to get my handed to me. So I would, I would like to be able to do the same thing again and not get my yeah. handed to me. So. Oh. Next up, CD Projekt Red uh, has updated its now infamous cyberpunk 2077 content roadmap previously the graphic listed various free updates and dlc drops for 2021 but the recently altered image now confirms that every that everything has been pushed into 2022 as far as we know those upcoming dlc packs will still be free for all players as well as the aforementioned ps5 edition of the game if you already own it on ps4 max cyberpunk is is and should be dead i don't understand why i understand why they have to keep supporting and pushing it because they kind of feel obligated to do so they've got something to put a point to prove it's definitely not the uh the comeback story that um like no man's sky of, had no, Hello yeah Games. yeah yeah, that's it. Thank you. It's definitely not the the story that that No Man's Sky had. No, the difference is, is they shut up, they went away, and like they built the game. And the difference is that game was playable on release, it just wasn't what people expected. Yeah. So honestly, what's this? What this is making me think is, so the game which released in 2020 was not ready to release in 2020. It was really ready to release in 2022. Yeah. That's kind of gross. So yeah, everyone has essentially paid for an early access version of the game, which is fine. The early access games exist. However... But you know you're getting an early access game yeah, when you buy an early access game. The difference here is we, the, everyone was under the impression that they were getting, you know, this big honking massive game that is ready to go and it's going to blow your mind so much so that you bought the fucking chair, Max. I mean, it is a comfortable chair. Yeah, part, yeah. As long as that, that as long as that part pays off, it, that's all right. Look, I, 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 I will likely never go back. Um, I still have it installed for whatever reason. I might just uninstall it. I don't see. I also going don't back. think I will go back. To be honest. Mm. Mm. Quick bits, Ryan. <gasps> I didn't get. To I, I actually actually landed them this time. Capcom's Pragmata is making, quote, steady progress and is targeting a 2023 release. Nice. The Devil in Me will be the Dark Pictures Anthology's season one finale, as recently uh, announced by uh, the studio. Yeah, so just like uh, Little Hope and Man of Medan, when you finish the game, there's a little trailer hinting at what the next one is to is to is to be uh yeah so i have not as i have not finished the title yet i have not gone and watched this trailer uh i don't want to spoil myself just yet but the the, the devil in me sounds like uh sounds cool yeah 
uh, Apple Music is now on PS5. Yeah, so, for, you know, which is interesting because I remember there was a, uh, a deal a couple of months ago that you get six months of, of Apple mm. TV just by having PS Plus. So yep. that's cool. Looks like there's a bit, bit of uh, partnership going on there. I don't use Apple Music. I'm a Spotify man myself. So, but I'm sure for some success. Uh, Shoji Meguro, Persona series composer, has left Atlas but will work on future titles. Go independent, go on contract. Mm. Makes like, once again as a contractor, he can charge whatever he wants. And as uh, the music of Persona, especially Persona Five, is so yeah. famous and loved and adored, he can almost charge whatever he wants, and they will probably have to pay it. Pretty much. And lastly, a Quiet Place movie is getting a single player horror game adaptation. Where yeah. All right. I haven't seen A Quiet Place, so I, I'm, I don't know what it would be like as a game, but sure, I guess. Sure. Now, for some reason, I screwed up the editing of this document, so feel free it's to... It's all good. Uh, scroll down. Yeah. <laughs> so here are the top 10 best-selling PS4 games in Australia for the week ending the 24th of October, 2021. Number 10, Rainbow Six Siege, which uh, Reverend Puck in the chat believes that is the most successful ubisoft game to date which checks out yeah that actually probably makes sense yeah number nine back for blood number eight call of duty black ops cold war number seven uh the dark pictures anthology house of ashes number six demon slayer word 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 number five <laughs> red dead redemption 2 number four grand theft auto 5 number three nba 2k 22 number two uh ea sports fifa 22 and returning to the number one spot is Far Cry 6. It's got words, words, words. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, upcoming titles. We have Tunch coming to PlayStation 4 November 2nd. Demon Turf, PlayStation 4 November 2nd. Conway, Disappearance at Dahlia View, PS4, PS5, November 2nd. Mobile Suit Gundam, Battle Operation Code Fairy, PS4, PS5, November 4th. And Call of Duty Vanguard... PS4, PS5, November 5th. So that was the last time we see Call of Duty Black Ops uh, Cold War in the top 10. Uh, dude, this has snuck up so hard. <laughs> I have totally forgot that Call of Duty Vanguard was a thing. Yeah. And it's coming out like this week, which makes sense because it always, okay, for most most years, it's come out around my birthday. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Well, it's normally like last week of October, first week of November. Yeah. It's because, like, for, for the last couple of years, when, when, you know, family have like, oh, what do, what do I get you for your birthday? I'm like, oh, then fucking, I'm, buy me something that I'm not, like, I, look, Call of Duty, buy me Call of Duty. I'd play it, but I wouldn't rush out to buy it myself. There yeah. you go. That's a perfect present right, right then and there. Anything? Are you going to jump on any of these? Are you going to jump on Call of Duty? I might wait for the Christmas sale, to be honest. Yeah, because is there zombies? Yeah, I just want it for the zombies. Yeah. I, like, I could not care about the... I haven't played a Call of Duty campaign since Modern Warfare 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just... I do not enjoy multiplayer anymore because I'm now an old man and my reflexes ain't what they used to be. No. No. So old. Because all those, all those sweaty little kids is way better than me now. So the, the game's not enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Very, very it much is, so. Like, it is not fun being dead constantly in a shoot. Like, no, it, it's, it's not fun. And like, because we've got real, we've got real world lives. So we don't have the time to, to sit down and get busy. You know, like we, even lockdown, we were working. We, we weren't able to sit and just get good at Call of Duty. I don't think I, even if I had the time, I don't think I could just sit down and get good at Call of Duty no, I anymore. No, I, I think, yeah, I think my Call of Duty time is done uh, many, many, I mean, many, many years ago. I mean, back when I was all right at the game, I didn't have to wear glasses. I now have to wear glasses to play video games because my eyesight's so bad. I'm now like, you know, 10 years older. My reaction time is just absolutely pathetic now. Mm, it's not good. It's not nice. Mm. But anyways, thank you everyone for joining us this week we do appreciate you taking the time now a reminder uh for the next uh month so for all all recordings in the month of uh november they are recorded live on twitch as per usual however not at the usual time of saturday 4 p.m instead it will be on sundays at 4 p.m as max and i uh you know return to regular freedoms for the coming weeks as i got my birthday i got wrestling shows i got all these things that are, that are coming up and taking up my saturdays 
Which uh, makes life so much harder for you because you have one less day to edit the show. Yeah, which means I've got to cram it on uh, on the Sunday afternoon to get it all, all together. So it, it's very much a problem for me. Um, but if you are listening through on the regular services, hey, man, hey, John, appreciate it. Um, nothing changes for you. So yep. we're going to do it's, it. Yeah. As most people uh, that, that do consume our show do take it through, uh, so, you know, pods, um, the podcast feed, they ain't going to see literally any difference at all. Mm. But anyways, Max, send it home. Well, everybody, this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning on podcast services, including Apple po- Podcasts and Spotify and 9am on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials. Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join us as the conversation, head over what? Head over to twitch.tv slash the pop cultures where you can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are on podcast services, be sure to give us a five star rating and a written review. If you are on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. If you want to support us financially, you can patreon.com slash the pop culturist as well as our merchandise store, because.com slash shop. We can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Once again, shout out to the Patreon for helping us get this new little uh, uh, digi- uh, audio interface for the studio uh, as the other one has, uh, after eight years of service, has shit itself. So we've had to, re- I've had to replace it. So thank you, Patreon, once again. But until next week, I'll be older. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players.